This presentation is titled The Lamb of God or The Ram of God. This is a very popular and well-known motif in all of sacred scripture. Whether it's the Judeo-Christian writings, the Islamic writings, the Hindu writings, or any other writings uh, for that matter, all sacred scripture uh, carries this motif of the lamb or the ram. <clears throat> and here we have a beautiful old map which is based on a further ancient map of the planet Earth. And we see that... Uh, it has a sine wave on it. This is the ecliptic. And um, this map is um, divided into two hemispheres, the uh, east and the west, but it, al it is also divided by uh, the equator, which divides the north and the south. And you can see clearly here the uh, ecliptic, the path of the sun, the apparent path of the sun. And so what we have, starting from left, is the sun departing from the equator on the 21st of March. Now, in astronomical and astrological terms, this is the sign of Aries, the Lamb, or the Ram. In astronomy, this is where right ascension of meridian begins. Zero degrees, right ascension, begins in zero degrees, Aries, the Lamb. And so here at the left, you can see the glyph, the uh, glyph for Aries, the Lamb, just as the sun uh, departs from the 21st of March for the Tropic of Cancer. And so for 30 days or 30 degrees, the sun on the ecliptic will be in the Lamb and it will produce such a heat as to cause the blossom in the Northern Hemisphere. This is the Lamb of God that introduces the spring season. So spring begins here at this point on the 21st of March. Three months later or 90 days later or 90 degrees later when the sun reaches the Tropic of Cancer on June the 21st, we have a solstice. Now, this is where wave amplitude occurs because on the equinoxes, we have perfect balance of 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. Hence, these two points of the equinoxes where Aries is, which in, Jewish, uh, in the Jewish calendar is Nisan, Nisan is the wonderful sacred Jewish month where all the um, great festivities occur. In fact, in every culture on the planet, the major festivities of the year occur when the sun is in the sign of Aries on the ecliptic. And so this day is sacred, the two equinoxes, March the 21st and September the 21st, which is right in the middle of the two hemispheres and that is where the sign of Libra, the seventh sign, begins. In fact, the scales of Libra indicate that the sine wave is balanced. It is in the middle. Hence, there is a sense of judgment, a sense of balance with the sign of Libra, the seventh sign. And what occurs is the sun now on the ecliptic is below the equator and be, uh, causes the fall, the sun falling toward the Tropic of Capricorn or the autumn to begin at that point. Nine, uh, 90 days later or three months later, after the sign of Libra, we come finally to the wintry tropic of Capricorn uh, and this brings about the uh, solstice of winter. And so what we have is four signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. 
These are the four cardinal signs. Card in Latin means hinge, <clears throat> opener. You see like a hinge on a door. So as the sun approaches these four sacred places along the ecliptic, it opens the door to the seasons. So Aries at the start of the sine wave uh, opens to the spring. Cancer, the, the 21st of June, the summer, the summer solstice opens to summer. And these, this is the glorious moment, these six months of photosynthesis for the Northern Hemisphere where all vegetable matter grows and the harvest occurs as the sun is declining and heading towards August, September and all the harvest is, occurred, uh, is collected in the, uh, the season of Virgo when the sun is in um, August, September on the ecliptic and all has ripened and hence the virgin is holding out her sheaf of grain so as to indicate that uh, the harvest is to be collected. Then as the sun dips below the equator this line is called the the equator is known was known in antiquity as the line of truth because you see the sun is considered to be judged at that moment and in fact in Jewish tradition around the 21st of September they yearly celebrate what is called Judgment Day or Yom Kippur or Rosh Hashanah because Rosh is referring to the head. It is the start, the beginning of their new year in the autumn called Tishri. And also there they have the ancient festival of tabernacles because the Israelites were encouraged to live in booths for seven days the holy week of tabernacles so as to remember that they are only transient and temporary on this planet and so the booths were indications the tents of uh, a very very fleeting and short-lived material existence so here we have the great science of light presented before us and if one should Google uh, ancient maps uh, <clears throat> one will find that there are many of these maps with the sun wave indicating the part of the sun. <clears throat> I have here the quote of Walter Russell from his book The Secret of Light. In the wave lies the secret of creation and this is the wave that in all fractals is the secret of creation. In fact, <clears throat> this wave <clears throat> is produced In fact, this wave is produced by the sun Helios on the ecliptic. And you will find that in the DNA we have a similar wave of two helixes. And this is the name derived from the sun, helix. In fact, all the terminology for the DNA is repeated on the ecliptic as we shall see and so Helios the Sun is the ruler of light in our solar system hence this is the ecliptic and the wave that is devoted to the Sun only the Sun can right ascend the Sun is always to be found on the ecliptic the other planets in the solar system that follow the Sun on the ecliptic will either be on the ecliptic right ascending with the sun or they will be in declination. Right ascension is the corresponding term for GMT. In other words, the longitudinal lines that you can see here on this map. Declination is in reference to the latitudinal lines going north and south from the equator at intervals of 15 degrees.
So the sun can never declinate. It is always right ascending. Hence the Egyptians called the sun Ra, the right ascender. And right ascension of meridian begins in Aries, as I have already said. Hence the ram Aries enjoys to be the first sign. Now, if you were to Google images of the zodiacal Adam Kadmon man, you will see countless images of the ram Aries on the head of the human being. This is an indication that Aries is in the head. In fact, it corresponds with the cerebrum, the cerebram. In theology, this is called Sarah Abram, because Abram means father ram. And so, as we shall see, all of uh, the theologies of the planet carry these themes. Here is another uh, map, and as you can see, this map has the sine wave starting at the right in Aries. So, there are two ways of depicting this sine wave. You can start it from the left, you can start it from the right. It matters not. On March 21st, when the sun's path passes over the equator, it is the vernal equinox. This event became known as the Passover because the sun now finally passes over from the winter climes to the northern uh, climes, the summer climes. And so beginning from March the 21st, the days grow longer and the nights are shorter. Whereas the other equinox, which is being pointed to here um, by this blue line in the middle, is pointing to the moment where the nights are longer and the days are shorter. Hence we have, a, we have two equinoxes and these days have always been considered to be sacred in antiquity. In scripture they are called the two candlesticks, the two olive trees, the two witnesses, the two covenants, the covenant of works and the covenant of grace. The covenant of works is the vernal equinox because one has to work in the field in order to enjoy the harvest. The autumnal equinox occurring on the 21st of September is the covenant of rest, the covenant of grace, and the sun brings us into the winter. Hence, we can rest from our labours. The entire planet is in equilibrium at these two moments. And on the autumnal equinox, um, we see that winter, winter, autumn and winter begin, whereas with uh, March the 21st, the winter is over and spring has begun. The sun has resurrected from its wintry death. Hence, we see Christians celebrating the resurrection of their saviour. Um, in astrology, this is called the exaltation of the sun. Aries is the exaltation of the sun. Here we have the tractate Rosh Hashanah, which relates a dispute between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Joshua around the beginning of the second century. Rabbi Joshua held in Nisan the world was created. In Nisan the patriarchs were born. On Passover, Isaac was born. New Year, Sarah, Rachel and Hannah. Agnes, the English name of Hannah, became Anne, a name related in many medieval and Elizabethan times to Agnes through Anne, and you see the various uh, spellings for Anne, they are derived from the Hebrew Hannah, God favoured me. Rabbi Joshua held, in Nisan the world was created. In Nisan the patriarchs were born. On Passover Isaac was born. On New Year Sarah, Rachel and Hannah were visited. On New Year, Joseph went forth from prison. On New Year, the bondage of our ancestors ceased in Egypt. 
and in Nisan they will be redeemed in time to come. So we see here that Joshua, Rabbi Joshua, clearly held that everything began in Nisan. And this corresponds with the astrological view of the creation of the world because in antiquity the astrologers held that the world um, in general began when all the planets were aligned in the sign of Aries, Nisan. Whereas Rabbi Eliezer, by contrast, said, in Tishri the world was created. In Tishri the patriarchs were born. In Tishri the patriarchs died. On Passover Isaac was born. On New Year Sarah, Rachel and Hannah were visited. On New Year Joshua went forth from prison. On New Year the bondage of our ancestors in Egypt ceased. In Nisan they were redeemed and in Tishri they will be redeemed in time to come. On New Year the bondage of our ancestors ceased in Egypt. It is written in one place. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of, e of the Egyptians. And it is written in another place. I removed his shoulder from the burden. In Nisan they were delivered, as scripture recounts. In Tishri they will be delivered in time to come. This is learnt from the two occurrences of the word horn. It is written in one place, blow the horn on the new moon. And it is written in another place, in that day a great horn shall be blown. Well this is dealing with the blowing of the horns um, on Passover and also in Tishri on Judgment Day. Here in another sentence in this um, wonderful um, tractate Rosh Hashanah, it says there are four new years. On the first of Nisan is the new year for kings and for festivals. On the first of Elul is the new year of the tithe of cattle. Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Simeon, however, place this on the first of Tishri. On the first of Tishri is the new year for years, for release and jubilee years, for plantation and for tithe of vegetables. So we see here, I'll just clarify what this means, the four new years are in references to the two equinoxes and the two solstices because the cardinal signs signaled new seasons. Hence, this is why we have four Gospels and four winds and um, four directions, etc., because of the sun on the ecliptic. So, we have plenty of evidence here in these uh, very few... Um, uh, examples that um, we have definitely in theology uh, four starting points of the year and uh, therefore we have uh, the basis of the uh, liturgical year which is the sun on the ecliptic. In the book by Thomas J. Talley, The Origins of the Liturg Liturgical Year, he uh, quotes uh, Justin Martyr there and Justin Martin's Martyr says, For the prophets have proclaimed two advents, parousias, of his. The one, that which is already past, when he, has, when he came as a dishonored and suffering man. But the second, when according to prophecy, he shall come from heaven with glory, accompanied by his angelic host. Hence, this is why in theology you have the second coming of the Saviour because the two equinoxes have to do with the first and the second coming. The word parousia is maranatha. Now I've highlighted uh, rana because this is just a um, another way of uh, writing lamb or ram and parousia is the second coming uh, it's a an eschatological expectation. However, it is not to be taken for simple prediction of the, f the future. Rather, it was a dimension of Jewish chronology and of understanding of festival as of the festivals um, as the fulcrum of the year. The notion of a new year 
is always in fact more ambiguous than we suppose and we recognize a number of points at which the year turns. The civil New Year's Day is January 1 now, although in England it was March 25th through the first half of the 18th century. So England resisted the Roman calendar, the Roman secular New Year of January 1st, and they pinned the start of their new year around the equinox. In fact, they waited three full days for the sun to pass the, uh, the equinox on March the 21st and initiated their year on March 25th. Plutarch, who was a contemporary more or less, uh, who lived in the first century, whereas um, the two rabbis previously mentioned uh, were in the second century, he declared in Isis and Osiris, one of his most uh, recognized works, in 65 uh, paragraph 1. In this way we shall undertake to deal with the numerous and tiresome people, whether they be such as take pleasure in associating theological problems with the seasonal changes in the surrounding atmosphere, or with the growth of the crops and the seed times and ploughing. And also those who say that Osiris is being buried at the time when the grain is sown and covered in the earth and that he comes to life and reappears when plants begin to sprout. For this reason also it is said that Isis, when she perceived that she was pregnant, put upon herself an amulet on the sixth day of the month Phaothi. And upon the time of the, the winter solstice, she gave birth to Harpocrates. This is another name for... Um, Horus, imperfect and premature, amid the early flowers and shoots. For this reason they bring to him as an offering the first fruits of growing lentils, and the days of his birth they celebrate after the spring equinox. When the people hear these things, they are satisfied with them and believe them, deducing a plausible explanation directly from, from what is obvious and familiar. Hence we see here this very uh, revealing uh, citation of Plutarch where he shows that Harpocrates was born on the 21st of December and was celebrated by the Egyptians at that time, but they also celebrated his birth at the spring equinox. Hence the confusion of the two festive seasons, the Christmas and the uh, Easter celebration. Here we have a picture of Isis, Serapis and their child Harpocrates from the Louvre Museum. Please notice that Louvre begins in RE which is Lou, the Sun, L and Ra, Louvre. And we shall see that as we go. Here is a list of all of the holy occurrences that occur in the month of Nisan, i.e. the sign of the land, Aries. On Nisan 17, Noah's Ark safely rested on Mount Ararat. Notice the two Ra's in the word Ararat. Nisan 17, the Hebrews entered Egypt 430 years before deliverance. Nisan 17, Moses led the Israelites through the parting of the Red Sea. Nisan 17, day of first fruits. Israel entered and ate the first fruits of the promised land. Nisan 17, the walls of Jericho fall. And of course, the spies go off to um, to save and um, collect Rahab, the prostitute, who uh, put down a um, who uh, tied a scarlet thread from her window. This is all in reference to Ra, Rahab, the prostitute, on the ecliptic in Nisan. In Nisan seventeen, Hezekiah 
cleans out the temple 800 years after entering the promised land. In Nisan 17, Queen Esther saves the Hebrews from elimination. Nisan 17, the resurrection of the Messiah. And here we have uh, a very interesting uh, figure, number of the odds of these, all of these things occurring on one day on the ecliptic. And it says the odds of just two of these events all happening on the same day of the Hebrew year are one in 129,000. The odds of all these events happening on the same day in the Hebrew year are 783 quadrillion, 864 trillion, 876 billion, 960 million. So really it's impossible. Hence we see that clearly the scriptures are referring to the astronomical and astrological phenomena occurring on the ecliptic. In scripture this is referred to the 21st of March, the crossing, the Passover, is referred to the branch of the root of Jesse. Isaiah 4.2 says, In that day, March the 21st, shall the branch of the Lord, Mars, be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely. Zechariah 3.8 says, Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, you and your friends who sit before you, for they are men <clears throat> who are a sign. Behold, I will bring my servant the branch. Notice the bra, branch, in the word branch. Zechariah 6.12, tell him, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. Here is the man called the branch. He will branch out from where he is and build the temple of the Lord. <clears throat> yes, because the sun branching out after the 21st of March builds the temple of the Lord, i.e. the four seasons. In the book The Messiah Myth, page 211, Thomas L. Thompson um, relates, Fundamental to both the Dionysius myth and the earlier legends and traditions of Baal and Tammuz, in the seasonal rhythm of agriculture that looks forward to the spring's resurrection, the journey into the underworld, the world of the dead, with its metaphors of mourning and transforming tears becoming rain, is a myth-creating pattern. The grain's resurrection falling, following the rain in the springtime epitomizes this universal cycle of nature and supports New Year festivals of new wine and wide-ranging metaphors celebrating spring's new life. At the heart of the biblical fertility religion, as at the heart of the Gospels, is the metaphor of resurrection. Now, other things occur on Nisan 17. For instance, the binding of Isaac. You will recall that Abraham is the father ram. So, Ezekiel 28.14 talks about the holy mountain of God. Well, of course, it is the holy mountain of God. It's called Ararat. Of course, everything happens in Nisan. The binding of Isaac is a story from the Hebrew Bible in which God asks Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac, on Mount Moriah, Marwa in Arabic in Aramaic and Hebrew. Why? Because it's Mars is the ruler of the sign Aries. So Aries is always associated with Mars. Mar, backward, is Ram. Reading on, the account states that Abraham found Isaac, his son, before placing him on the altar, bound Sorry, the account states that Abraham bound Isaac, his son, before placing him on the altar, resulting in the popular name for the incident. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, 
and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And here you see two depictions of this, one by Caravaggio and one by Giovanni Battista Tiepolo. And you see this is very, very famous. This is all occurring in the springtime in the sign of Aries, Abraham. And you see Isaac was born on the 15th of Nisan. John the Baptist was born on the 15th of Nisan. The manna ends on the 15th of Nisan. Yes, of course, because the manna is the fluid in the cerebrum, which is the cerebrospinal fluid, which um, bathes the whole tree of life, which is the pneumogastric nervous system of the body. On the 10th of Nisan, the Israelites crossed the Jordan. On the 10th of Nisan, Miriam, which means Mi my ram, the sister of Moses, dies. Also on this beautiful mountain of Marwa, we have an individual in the time of King David called Arauna. Notice the Ra in the name. And this is from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. Arauna was a Jebusite who was mentioned in the, in the books of Samuel who owned the threshing floor on the summit of Mount Moriah that David purchased and used as the site for assembling an altar to God. The book of Chronicles, a later text, renders his name as Ornan. Please pay attention to or because this is in reference to gold and that's the gold of Aries, the light, the lamb, the lamp of God. Late in his reign as king of Jerusalem, David erred grievously in the sight of the Lord by offering a census. As part of his repentance before the Lord, David purchased a large piece of property owned by a Jebusite man named Ornan or Aruana, for 600 shekels of gold. 600 is a very, very key and telling number. David's purchase of Ornan's property seems to have included an additional 50 shekels of silver. This 50 is in reference to Pentecost. For the purchase, for the purchase threshing floor proper and oxen for sacrifice. Oxen has to do with the next sign of the zodiac, the bull the ox, Taurus. David then erected an altar there and offered sacrifices there. It was David's intent to build a temple to the Lord on this property, on Mount Moriah. However, God chose Solomon for this task instead, after allowing David to amass the material resources that would be required. The prophet Gad suggested the area to King David as a fitting place for the erection of an altar to Yahweh. Gad is the one of the signs of the twelve sons of Israel which corresponds to Ares, the Lamb of God. Here we see in this slide Mount Moriah and we see the um, Solomon's original temple was built in this particular area on top of the mountain of Mars. Of course, this is dealing with the mountain of Ares. And here again, we see the second temple, which is also known as Herod's temple because in 19, um, in, um, 19 BC, it was largely rebuilt and it was the so-called Herod the Great, who did this. The original second temple was still a large undertaking and constructed by the returning exiles during Ezra's time under Zerubbabel's leadership. Cyrus largely furnished the temple and provided the large amount of money needed for this big project. 
rest assured that all of this literal historical rendition of the scriptures um, is only a cover story for the real story, which is the sun on the ecliptic. And, it's, and um, this is a technique which is very, very well done by the writers of these sacred uh, scriptures because all sacred scriptures are written as such to contain four levels of understanding. The literal earthy at the bottom, the moral sentimental, watery on the second rung, the allegorical rendition, the air element as the third rung, and the anagogical, mystical fire rendition, which is the top rung. And of course, this is where most of the churchgoers get lost because they are stuck on the literal. Here are other names for this wonderful mountain, which is the cerebrum on top of the uh, uh, spinal column, which is the head heaven in each one of our uh, beautiful bodies. The hill of Jerusalem, holy mountain, the holy mountain of God, the mountain of God, the mountain of the congregation, the mountain of the daughter of Zion, the mountain of the height of Israel, mountain of the house, mountain of the house of the Lord, mountain of holiness, mountain of his holiness, mountain of the Lord, mountain of the Lord's house, mountain of the Lord of hosts, mountain of thine inheritance, Mount Zion, etc., etc. Here we have the Temple Mount, and in Aramaic, this is called Har Habaith or Al Haram Ash Sharif. Haram means the high ram because always temples are built on mountains and they are always devoted to Hiram Abith the ruler of or the architect of Solomon's temple. Hiram is in reference to the Hiram Ares, the brain inside our bodies, the soul of man, Solomon's temple. At least four religions are known to have used the Temple Mount, Judaism, Christianity, Roman religion and Islam. Biblical scholars have often identified it with two biblical mountains of uncertain location, Mount Moriah, where the binding of Isaac took place, and Mount Zion, where the original Jebusite fortress stood. However, both interpretations are disputed. Yes, of course, because it's not literal. It's allegorical, and the Holy Land is your body. See my presentation on YouTube called Your Body is the Holy Land. Mount Moriah in Arabic is... Marwa, Mars, of course, where all mountains are built, uh, where all uh, uh, temples are built on the hill of Mars. Here also we see Rome, which is Ram, Rama, Roma, built um, opposite or near the field of Mars. And we see the seven hills, which correspond to the seven consciousness centers in the brain which is the cerebram. And, of course, you see the Vatican over the river, uh, over the river Tiber, and we see, of course, the Tiber Island right there next to Capitoline Hill. Capitoline Hill is dealing with the primary consciousness center in the capita, which is the head where the cere cerebrum is in the cranium, which is otherwise known as Golgotha or Calvary. You also see the Palatine Hill. Well, that is just above the tongue. That's the palate bone, the point in the uh, cranium where the cerebrum uh, connects with the Palatine Hill. And all of these names, the Corinal, the, the Minnal, Escaline, Caelian, Aventine, Palanti Palatine and Capitoline Hill all have references to the consciousness. 
inside of our brains. Here again we see ancient Rome built on the seven hills right there where Romulus the ram, of course Romulus and his brother Remus uh, sucked on the tit of a wolf. Yeah, that would be the canine which is what the cerebrum Aries is because where the ovus is, where the lamb is, there is also the wolf, the canine. And in astrology, Aries is the sign of the canine, whereas Sagittarius is the equine, equine Taurus is the bovine, Leo is the feline, etc., etc. Here we have the Acropolis with the Areopagus or Aries Pagos, the rock of Mars, Aries, um, in the foreground. Here again we see the Areopagus where the Apostle Paul supposedly, Paul being Apollo, Saturn, of course it's not literal, it's all literary and this is the rock of Aries and all ancient cities were built on the rock of Aries or Mars or the ram, the lamb of God because it's your head, <laughs> the cerebrum. In Japan we also have a shrine, the oldest shrine in Japan, 1200 years old, which also celebrates the, um, the festival of Isaac. In fact, that's what they call it. They call it Misakuchi, which means the festival of Isaac, which happens to occur on the 15th of April every year. The 15th of April is in the middle of the sign of Aries, the Passover sign, the Easter sign. In Nagano Prefecture, Japan, there is a large Shinto shrine named Suatesha. Shinto is the traditional religion peculiar to Japan. Over 1200 years old, it is one of the oldest shrines in existence and is mentioned in the Kojiki, an 8th century text. At Suatesha, the traditional festival called Ontosei is held on 15th April every year. This festival illustrates the story of Isaac in chapter 22 of Genesis in the Bible. That is, the story that Abraham was about to sacrifice his own son Isaac. The festival, on to say, has been held since ancient days and has been thought of as the most important festival of Suatasia. People call this festival the festival for Misakuchi God. Misakuchi might be Mi Isaku Chi. Mi means great. Isaku is most likely Isaac, the Hebrew word Yitzak, and Chi is something for the end of the word. Today, this custom of a boy about to be sacrificed and then released is no longer practiced, but we can still see the custom of the wooden pillar called Onie Basira which means sacrificial pillar. The festival of Ontosei is held on Mount Moriah, Moriah no Kami, God of Moriah. Moriah Sun is their holy place. The name Moriah is pronounced, pronounced the same as Moriah of Genesis 22 verse 2. Now I'm reading from an article that you can find on the internet which is uh, discussing this most sacred festival of antiquity in Japan because this is syncretism pure and simple. These festivals have been celebrated for thousands and thousands of years on this planet. Of course the Roman teaching of the literal Jesus Saviour has hijacked syncretism and taught that it is a literal story, um, all to the dismay and delusion of all the churchgoers who believe this rubbish. At this festival <coughs> animal sacrifices are also offered. 75 deer are sacrificed but among them it is believed that there is a deer with its ears split. Passover fest this 
mimics the Passover festival on Mount Gerizim in Samaria where 75 rams are sac sacrificed. Here we have the Yamabushi um, who is a priest, a sacred priest of this religion with a talking blowing a horn. So the talking is the ram's horn. The Yamabushi is a big seashell as a horn. This is very similar to the Jews blowing the shofar or ram's horn. The way it is blown and the sounds of it, of the Yamabushi's horn, are very similar to those of the shofar. Because there are no sheep in Japan, the Yamabushi had to use uh, seashell horns instead of ram's horns. Here you see they also have the phylactery on their heads like the Jewish priests were um, instructed to do. And they call it, surprisingly enough, Torah no Maki, a scroll, the scroll of the Torah. Here we also have the Japanese with the Ark of the Covenant, the Omikoshi, and it is carried with two poles, exactly the same as the Hebrew tradition. And they also call this Harai um, Harai Nusa. Notice the Ra in Hara, which is nothing but High Ram, the architect of the builder of the temple. And we will see this Hara, Hero, Pharaoh, Hiram um, further on as we go in the presentation. And the Jews also wave the sheaf of the harvest as the Jews do. Here is a Japanese expressing, uh, expression, uh, a very, very common Japanese expression which I myself learnt in uh, 2005 on a um, tour of Japan. Hitotsu, futatsu, mitsu, yotsu, itsutsu, mutsu, nanatsu, yatsu, Kononotsu Towa, which is um, the numbering system, the Chinese numbering system that the Japanese have inherited, which is alien to the Japanese language. And they say, Hifu yo itsumu nana ya koko no towa. And in Hebrew, the same, very same expression is, Haifa mi yotsia ma nane. Ika nena, ika, ika ena tavo. This means, who shall bring out the beautiful? What words shall we say for her to come out? The beautiful, of course, is the springtime. And here we have, ame no mi nakanushi no kami, which is the original name of God in Japanese. Notice the amen. Firstborn of the Shinto God. Also, they call him Amaterasu or Kamisama. Notice the Am um, and the Ra in the word Amaterasu. Also, Japanese shrines, they all imitate the Israelite tabernacle because the tabernacle is the DNA and it is also Aries, the cerebram, as we shall see. Located near the entrance of the Japanese shrine, there is a temizuya, which is a place for worshippers to wash their hands and mouth, exactly as is in the Jewish system, in the Jewish synagogues. The ancient tabernacle and temple of Israel also had a laver for washing and sanctification near the entrances uh, as well, or near the entrance well. And, sorry, uh, near the entrance as well. In the Israeli temple, there are two pillars used as a gate. And in Aramaic, um, <clears throat> which is the ancient, the language that the ancient uh, Israelites used, the word for gate was Tara. Notice the Ra, short for Ram. Here we have a picture of the Shinto priests that wear the same linen robes as the ancient priests. And uh, we see they had fringes, as it says in Deuteronomy uh, 23, rather 22, 12, where it says, 
make them fringes in the corners of their garments throughout their generations. As we can see, there was a universal religion once upon a time, and it was based on the sun along the ecliptic. And always um, they had very, very similar traditions and very, very similar celebrations because this is syncretism. Syncretism was the science slash religion of antiquity and has been with us for uh, hundreds of thousands of years, as shall be proven as we go. And on the 15th day of the same month, the first month, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. It is a Japanese custom during the celebration to eat mochi, rice cakes, throughout the seven days. Of course, this is just um, similar to the Hebrew celebration. Which one was first? Neither. This is the perennial philosophy. It always was, it always will be. Over uh, to India now, as we shall see that every nation and every culture under the sun had a celebration to the Ram. And here we have the famous Ramanavami, the, the celebration which occurred on the same day as the Japanese Misakuchi, the 15th of April. Of course, here we have the celebration of the birth of Lord Rama, Aries, of course, because as above, so below, the sun is on the ecliptic in the sign of the Ram. Hence, what do you celebrate below? You celebrate the Ram and the resurrection of the Ram, the Lamb of God, Jesus, who is no, nothing but Sri Rama. And of course, this is the science of as above, so below. Rama was an incarnation of Vishnu and the hero of the Ramayana, the Sanskrit, Sanskrit epic of 24,000 stanzas. Please notice 24,000. This is uh, how the Hindus um, um, numbered their, Kali, their um, yuga cycles or the yuga uh, cycle uh, which is 24,000 years long or 25,000 920 years long, the cycle of procession. As you can see here, they celebrated um, uh, baby Rama who was born on the 15th of April. Yes, because the sun is in the Ram, of course. Here also is another celebration called Lam Lila. And it is a dramatic folk reenactment of the life of the Lord Ram ending up in a 10-day battle between Lord Ram and Raven, as described in the religious epic, the Ramayana. Ram Bharat, of course this is the same as Ararat, the Ram, is a part of Ramlila celebration in Agra. Notice the Ra in the end of Agra. It is one of the biggest annual events in North India. Ram Bharat literally means Bharat marriage, procession of Sri Ram. Every year a new locality is chosen in Agra and is elaborately decorated with lights and flowers. Yes, of course, because the flowers would be the blossoms of the springtime of Aries, the Lamb of God. Sri Ram Charitmanas is um, also an epic poem in uh, Awadi, composed by the 16th century Indian poet Goswami Tulsidas, and it literally means the lake of the deeds of Rama, the Lamb of God. Here the Jews celebrate on the 17th of Aries Bikrim. Bikurim uh, also is in reference to the Cerebran. And notice all of these celebrations. Celebration comes from Cerebram, which comes from Sarah Abraham. The festival of the first fruits, Aries, the Lamb of God. And here, of course, on the 15th of April, the Romans celebrate the Cerealia. Rhea is the goddess of. Um, of the um, 
serials as is Ceres. And Rhea is in reference to Maria, the mother of Jesus, Jesus, Jupiter Zeus. And of course, the father of Jesus is Joseph. That would be Father Seth, Father Set, Saturn. So, of course, Jesus is the son of Maria, Motheria, and Joseph, Father Set. The festival may have been founded as early as the Regal period. Regal is in reference to Ra, the king. Its archaic nature is indicated by a nighttime ritual described by Ovid. By the way, Ovid is from Ovis, the lamb, the first century poet, or rather the, um, the poet before the first century BCE. Blazing torches were tied to the tails of foxes who were released into the Circus Maximus. Yes, this recalls Samson um, who tied 300 uh, foxes and destroyed the fields of the, um, the Philistines, as did um, Gideon with his 300 men. Of course, this is all um, the same uh, mythology in all uh, cultures, dear friends. The origin and purpose of this ritual are unknown. It may have been intended to cleanse the growing crops and protect them from disease and vermin, or to add warmth and vitality to their growth. Ovid offers, offers an um, etiological explanation. A long, long ago, at ancient Carlioli, a farm boy caught a fox stealing chickens and tried to burn it alive. The fox escaped ablaze in its flight and fi it fired the fields and their crops which were sacred to Ceres. Ever since, foxes are punished at their festival. And there you see a depiction of Cereala, Cerealia on the 15th of April. Here we see the various rams in the various different religions. We have Brahm, we have Abraham, we have Moses, which is really, uh, Moses means water, drawn from the water, as does Mars. Mars is maritime, hence Moses is Mars's, the god of water. Ares, as you can see, he, has, he is replete with uh, horns, as you can see, so is uh, Amun-Ra in Egypt, and so is Alexander the Great, and every other hero who wants to be the Lamb of God will carry the horns on their head. There is Brahma, there is Sri Rama, and there is the High Ram, the hero himself, the builder of the temple, the soul of man. Here is another name for the lamb, Agni. Agni is the first word of the first hymn of the Rig Veda. So we see that the Lamb of God is celebrated in the Rig Veda. It's the first word of the Rig Veda. And it says, Agni, I lord the high priest, God, minister of sacrifice, the invoker, lavishest of wealth. And here we see various depictions of Agni, the fire god. It is a cognate with Latin Agnis, the root of the English ignite. In Hinduism, his vehicle is the ram. Igneous rock, derived from the Latin word ignis, means fire. Of course, because Aries is a cardinal fire sign. In Hindu scriptures, Agni is depicted with two or seven hands, two heads. Yeah, we'll see that that is very similar with um, the revelation depiction of uh, the Lamb of God with the seven seals. He has seven fiery tongues with which he licks sacrificial butter. He rides a ram or in a chariot harnessed by fiery horses. Agni is represented as red. Of course, Mars is red. You only have to look up to see that. 
and two-faced, suggesting both his destructive and beneficent qualities, and with black eyes and hair, three legs and seven arms. Arms is an anagram for ram and for Mars. He rides a ram or a chariot pulled by goats, or more rarely, parrots. Seven rays of light emanate from his body. Please pay attention to seven rays. Ray comes from Ra because the rays of the sun come from Ra, the sun god. One of his names is Sapta Jiva. Seven tongues. Sapta is sept in Latin. Set or Joe Set, Joseph. Another word of his epithets is Abhimani from Sanskrit. Abhi towards the ver verbal root, man to think, reflect upon, meaning dignified, proud, longing for, thinking, etc. Agni is the eldest son of Brahma, of course, because as the Lamb of God is the firstborn son of God, or the ram's son, and hence Jesus is our ransom, the ram's son. So, of course, Agni, the firstborn of Brahma, the ram. Revelation 5, 6, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Anno Domini means the Lamb of God, ruler of the era, calendar. And um, Anno Domini is really the domination calendar of all times. It is a Ponzi scheme, it is a fiction, and it really references many other various forms of domination by Rome. Um, it is a fictional construct. Calendars do not c exist in three dimensions and hence we see that um, this year of 2013 or 2014 is a fiction and has no existence or reality in in the real world. Here we have the Italian word for Agni and the Italian word for lamb is Agnello and in this advertisement here it is saying look at this lamb it is only a very very young lamb two million of these Agnis will be slaughtered during the Easter festival is this a jest of peace? No, it is not. Do not eat these lambs. And I appreciate this advertisement um, because the killing and murdering of animals uh, to eat is, has always been condemned in all sacred scriptures, including the Judeo-Christian scriptures. Here we have Saint Agnes carrying the lamb. She's always carrying the lamb. Uh, <clears throat> this Agnes of Rome is the English Anne, a name related in medieval and Elizabethan times to Agnes through Anne, Anne, Anna, and derived from the Hebrew Hannah, God favoured me, rather than the Greek. Agnes derives from the Greek name Agni Agne, meaning pure. Or holy, yes, because the Lamb of God is holy. Agnes is depicted in art with a lamb, as her name resembles the Latin word for lamb, Agnes. Anagogic, mystical, fire, Agnes, the lamb, Aries, Anna for annual, the year, because year is short for Yaram, the sun. In the Proto-Germanic language, the year was written as Ya-Ram. And in the Proto-Indo-European uh, language, it was Yerom, or the runic Yeran. 
So we see that year is just short for the ram of God. Here is the rune yera, jera, which means uh, patience up to a point. Know your time, but work your word always. And it's the rune of harvest and reward, the rune of peace on the land and in the heart, having to do with the year. Here we have Saint Anne, again, the mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary, because, of course, Anne is the year, and Mary is Mars, Maritime, the ruler of Aries. Here we have the um, Jesus known as the Lamb of God, John 1.29. And he's always carrying the Lamb, exactly as um, is rendered in astrology. Also, Jesus is the Lion of Judah. You'll notice the both words begin with L. L is the Elohim. And, of course, we shall see later on that L means the Lamb because the letter L is called Lambda, and in Arabic it's called Lam, the Lamb of God. And one of the elders said to me, Weep not, behold, the Lion that is of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath overcome to open the book and the seven seals thereof. And I saw in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, a lamb standing as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth. Here also we see that um, not only is Jesus called the Lamb of God, but he has other epithets. In fact, he has um, over 2,000 epithets in the Bible. And um, you can see there that all the signs of the zodiac are catered for. In Taurus, Jesus is called the Lord. He is my rock. Uh, Psalm 82. And in Deuteronomy 32, 4, we see um, the rock is perfect in his activity. For all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness with whom there is no injustice. Righteous and upright is he. Well... This is dealing, the footnote for the word rock is um, Hatsua, which is short for Osiris, which is short for Orion, the deacon of Taurus. Hence, when Jesus is referred to as the rock, it's dealing with the bull, who is similar to a rock, stable, earthy, sturdy, and unmovable. Jesus is also called the twin. Gemini is also called the unique one, <clears throat> the scarab of God, hence the crab of cancer. Leo, the lion of God, the lion of Judah. July, when Leo turns up every year on the ecliptic. The bread of life, of course, because Virgo gives us the bread. He is also called the dove, and as you can see, there is the scales of Libra and the holy dove that um, rests on the Lord at the moment of his baptism. He's also, he also says, be wise as doves and cautious as serpents. That's the sign of Scorpio, the eagle and the serpent and the scorpion. Capricorn, the horn of salvation. Of course, corn is a horn, a cornucopia, and Capri is the goat. Sagittarius, the high priest of Israel, Hebrews 3.1. The mediator, 1 Timothy 2.5. The son of man, Jesus, Aquarius, who has always been known as the son of man because it's the only man on the ecliptic. And also he is known as the Piscean, fisher of man. So here we have um, Vishnu, the um, archetype, the same archetype as the fish, Jesus. Fish is um, composed of two words, F meaning fire and Ish which is ash in Hebrew which means fire. Hence when you burn wood you are left with ash 
and this is why the ash tree is so sacred in uh, ancient uh, theology. And so we have the Christian fish, Jesus, the fisher of men, pertaining to fire. Hence we have Jesus saying, I am the light of the world because it is the fire element. Also he says, no one goes to the Father except through me. Of course, because fire is the great purging element which is the fire we must go through our souls, the lake of fire, so that we can return to the Empyrean, our true dwelling home. Here to the right we have the Colossi of Memnon. Memnon is composed of two words, Mem and Non. Mem is the Hebrew word for water. Nun is the Hebrew word for fish. So always in every culture you see this uh, Dagon fish god image, imagery. And of course Vishnu um, is nothing but fish and Nun. Uh, hence you see the uh, archetype, the forerunner of the Jesus figure, Joshua, the son of Nun. Nun meaning fish. So again, the fish is pertaining to the symbolism of Pisces, one of the great signs of the zodiac. Here also we have um, the biblical expressions for the, all the signs of the zodiac. Uh, Aries is known as Beth Aram. Clearly, the ram is there. A fortified city of Gad in Joshua 13.27, probably identical with Beth Haran. That's the Haran that we saw earlier in this presentation uh, where Mount Moriah or Mount Marwa is where Solomon built his temple and the mosque of the uh, Muslims is today. Also called the House of Grace. Also Beth Abara. This Bara is also con uh, connoting the Lamb, Aries. The house of confidence, Beth Bara. The chosen house, Beth Car, the house of the Lamb. These are all expressions in the so called Holy Bible, the Jewish, uh, the Judeo Christian scriptures pertaining to Aries. Continuing on, I will uh, go through all of these, although we are really just concentrating on the Ram, but um, this is just so that uh, we can see exactly the language of the scripture and how it is pertaining to the zodiac for everything, everything pertains to the ecliptic and the zodiac, the gospel above. Taurus, Baal Beth, Baal is the bull. Balbek, Balbit, house of the bull. Also, Beth Zur. Zur is short for Osiris. You will find this, as I've already mentioned a couple of slides uh, ago, Deuteronomy 32 for the rock. Perfect is his activity. For all his ways are justice, a God of faithfulness with whom there is no justice, injustice. Righteousness and upright is he. And the footnote for the rock is um, the word Hatsur, which is short for Osiris, the rock. In fact, um, Samson, we have Samson um, destroying a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an, of an ox. Well, that would be the Hyades. That is the jawbone in the ecliptic, in the zodiac, and Samson would be Orion. Gemini, Bethphage, house of my mouth, or of early th figs. Also, Beth Ezal, a neighbor's house. Yes, because uh, Gemini, the third house in astrology, pertains to neighbors and kin. Cancer, Beth Meon, house of the dwelling place. Yes, because Cancer, the fourth sign, the fourth house, is the uh, house of the home. This one is a no-brainer, Beth El. Uh, also, you see an, an English version of this, El is a Beth, backwards. House of the El Lord, the El Lion of the tribe of Judah. Beth Shemesh, house of the sun. Yes, of course, because the sun dwells in the sign of Leo. This is the domicile of Leo. Also, Beth 
Leboeth, house of lioness. Virgo, Bethlehem, house of bread. I have also pointed out in my presentations that Lehem is also lamb. So Bethlehem is also Aries. But um, I prefer to put it in uh, Virgo because that truly is where Bethlehem is, the house of bread. Or Bethany, Beth Anu in Egyptian, the place of birth of Horus, of course, because Horus is born of a virgin. So as is Jesus. Place of multiplying bread is what Bethany means. Also, Beth Rapha, house of health, because the sixth house in astrology pertains to health. Also, Beth Bire, the house of my creator, the house of my health, because the sixth house in astrology is dealing with health. Uh, Beth Anath, house of affliction. Again, afflictions, bad health. Libra, Beth Pazes, house of dividing asunder. Also Beth Horon, house of wrath, because this is where uh, the sun is judged in autumn, in September. So this is the wrath of God. Also Beth Air, division, or in the trial. So the scales of balance which divide. Scorpio, Beth Asmaveth the house of death's strength. Scorpio, the eighth sign of astrology, the house of death and transformation. Sagittarius, Sagittarius. Beth Palette, house of expulsion. Also Beth Peor, house of gaping or opening. Yes, because this is the gate of the gods, Sagittarius. Capricorn, Beth Palette, house of expulsion. Also Bethany, house of song, the house of affliction, house of dates or house of misery, house of misery or Osiris uh, because Lazarus or Osiris uh, dwells in this house pertaining to Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn and being the house of death, uh, Calvary or Golgotha where the place of bones where all dies in the winter. Hence, we have Beth Palette. Aquarius, Beth Esda, house of pity or mercy. Also, Beth Markaboth, house of bitterness wiped out. Yes, Mar is pertaining to Mars because Mars exalts Pisces. Beth Seda. House of Fishing, also Beth Dagon, the house of corn or fish. Well, corn, because opposite Pisces, is Virgo. Hence, we have the Lord Jesus feeding the multitudes with bread and fish, the Virgo-Pisces axis, which we've been in for the last 2,000 years. Genesis 15.9 says, And he said unto him, Take me and heifer, Taurus, a three years old, and a she-goat, Capricorn, a three years old, and a ram, Aries, a three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. These are two birds pertaining to Libra. And of course, Saturn exalts in Libra, and Saturn is another name for David, which is another name for dove, which is another name for turtle dove. Genesis 1.26, you don't have to go far if you want to see the best astrological treaties in history, the Judeo-Christian Bible. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy, creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Here you see in the first chapter of Genesis, the water, the air and the earth elements, which are all produced by fire, uh, are mentioned in one single verse. Noah, which is a play on the word Nua, which is in Hebrew, fire. Also Naham, comfort, Nua, meaning rest. Noah is considered a preacher of righteousness. 
Noah has three sons, Japheth, Ham, and Shem. Air, water, and earth, all produced by the great generator, fire. Japheth is ruach, the Hebrew word for spirit, or vital air. It's an excellent symbol of the ego clothed in the mercurial mind which makes man, man, and enables him to control and direct his bodily vehicles and activities in a rational manner. Patar, that's the short name for Japheth in Egypt. Jupiter, air. In Hebrew, Yafeth, Yefet. In Hebrew, uh, sorry, in Greek, Yafeth. In Latin, Yafeth Yapetus. In Arabic, Japheth is often regarded as the youngest son, though some traditions regard him as the eldest. They are listed in the order Shem, Ham, and Japheth in Genesis 5.32 and 9.18, but treated in the reverse order in chapter 10. Well, of course, literalists can never understand why this contradiction, because in generation, the order is fire, air, water, earth, in the order of uh, the... Uh, in the order of purity and grossness, and then returning back to cause uh, earth, water, air, and fire. Hence, all things are, are reabsorbed back into the, pu the purity of fire before everything turns, returns back to the Empyrean. In the 19th century, biblical syncretists associated the sons of Noah with ancient pagan gods. Japheth has been identified by some scholars with figures from other religious systems and mythologies, including Iapetus, the Greek titan, and Indian figures Dias, Gias Pitar, or Jupitar, <laughs> Saint Peter, and Prayapati, and the Roman Jupiter, or Father Jove, Saint Peter, Petra, the rock which became Jupiter. Japheth means fair. Yes, because air is hiding in the word fair. And in astrology, Jupiter is the god of air. So fair um, retains its uh, original source of fire producing air. This is why anyone who is fair is considered to be spiritual and mystical because of the element of air, hence Jupiter, the great benefic in astrology. Ham, which comes from the Hebrew word for water, I am. I am is the motto of Aries, pronounced Yam in Hebrew. Uh, there is a star in Aries called Hamel. The star is in the head of Aries, and this is the Ham that is pertaining to Aries. Mars is also marine, maritime, Mary, Moses, son of water. Water, I am, is the Hebrew word signifying water, the fluidic lunar element which forms the principal part of the human body. And this word is also the symbol of the finer fluidic vehicles of desire and emotion. Hence, this is why Ham was cursed in Genesis, and his son, Canaan. And this is why Mizraim, which is another word for Egypt, another son of Ham, pertains to that land which they call Chem. Down to this day, we still have Egypt being called Kemet, or Chem, or Can, which gives us chemistry and all of those water words. Shen. Yabesha, which means dry, the Hebrew word for earth, representing the solid fleshly part which makes up the cruciform earthy body, crystallized within the finer vehicles at birth and severed from them in the ordinary course of things at death, or in the extraordinary event that we learn to die the mystic death and ascend to the glories of higher spheres for a time. Set, Saturn, Earth, Shem means dusky, or Sem, renown, prosperity, name. 
<clears throat> here is the constellation of the Lamb. As you can see, Hamel, Ham, the son of Noah, the son of fire, is right there, the brightest star in the head of the ram. And as the ram turns his head, he beholds Taurus rising backwards. Hamel, Ham, son of Noah, Nua, fire. Abraham, the ram Abraham. Mars is the ruler of ram. Mars is the planet of water. War, t, maritime, marine, martial, etc. Jesus and the four elements. Here we have Christ, Christ the Redeemer. Christ redeemed us from that self-defeating, cursed life by absorbing it completely into himself. That is what happened when Jesus was nailed to the cross. He became a curse and at the same time dissolved the curse. What this means is the cross has four bars. The four bars are the four elements. Hence we have Jesus walking on water in Matthew 14, 24 to 33. We have Jesus who also um, has the fire element because uh, Jesus, it says in 1 Peter 3, 18 to 20, uh, some uh, translations use the word hell or Hades. For Christ also suffered one for sins, the just, for the unjust, for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Prison here is a word which is used and in many, many translations to replace uh, hell, Hades, fire, air. First, First Thessalonians 2.17 After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever because Jesus is also in the air. And of course, Jesus walked in Galilee on the earth. So we see that Jesus pertains to the four elements. Here we have the Lamb in Revelation. And always the Lamb has seven pertaining to the uh, cerebrospinal system with the seven chakras along the spine. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. So again we see uh, this beautiful artist's depiction of the lamb opening the seven seals, yes, because the, it is the cerebram which is responsible for opening the seals. Here is the fifth bowl, the seven-headed beast. Of course, this is the cerebrospinal system. The giving of the seven bowls of wrath, the first six plagues, Revelation 16. And this is a beautiful painting uh, done in 1531 by Gerung. The seven angels with seven trumpets and the angel with a censer from the Bamberg Apocalypse. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, an 1887 painting by Viktor Vaznetov, uh, Vaznetsov. The Lamb is visible at the top. Of course, the Lamb directs the Four Horsemen because the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, of the unveiling, would be the four cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, who unveil the good and acceptable year of the Lord. Here we have in uh, the Palermo Cathedral in Sicily 
a beautiful inscription on one of the pillars there outside the cathedral and we have the words, the opening words of the Quran. Of course we know Sicily was once ruled by the Islamists and um, here we have the famous opening words of the Quran, Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim or pronounced otherwise Bismillah il-Rahman il-Rahim. In this um, expression we find the ram, al-Rahman is the ram and al-Rahim is also the ram, translated the beneficent, the gracious, the merciful. So the very opening words of the Quran have celebrations of the Lamb six times in the opening words of the Quran and also in the opening words of every single sutra of the Quran except for one chapter. Here we have the components that build up the uh, word Allah. First of all, to the right, we have the green alif. This al is nothing but the lamb. Everywhere you see the L in Arabic, uh, you will see the lamb. The green figure on top, the number two, is the Hamzat Wazl, which causes this A name of Allah to be pronounced gutturally. In other words, Allah. So you would put a stop to the A. You would not say Allah. You say Allah. The third component is the letter Lam. The fourth is also the letter Lam. This is the word in Arabic for Lam. So the word Allah twice contains the name Lam, Aries, twice in it. For Allah is nothing but the Lamb of God. Here is uh, an, an, an ancient city in um, the Middle East called Ramallah, Ramallah. And it's composed of Ram, an Aramaic word that means high place or mountain, of course, because the cerebram is on the top of the body in Aries. And Allah, the Arabic word for God, literally the height of God. Yes, of course, because everything is built on the mountain of Mars, backwards for Ram, Aries. Muhammad. <clears throat> Due to his upright character, he acquired the nickname Al-Amin, meaning faithful, trustworthy, and Al-Sadiq, meaning truthful. Alternatives include Amin and Amin. These are nothing but the words Amon. And Amon, or in Jesus' name, Amen, refers to Amun-Ra, Amun-Ra the Ram. Possible date of birth? Of course, April 19, Aries the Ram. Quranic revelations begin in the cave of Hira. Yes, this is, of course, short for High Ram, the builder of the soul of man's temple, Solomon. In uh, mythologies, this is called the Cave of Arcadia. Ark would be short for Noah's Ark. In other words, the Dome of the Heavens, the ecliptic, which is the true gospel, as above, so below. Hence, wherever you see Ark, as in Noah's Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, please remember that it, there is only one Ark, and that is the arc of the ecliptic in the skies where the 12 constellations of the zodiac, the 12 apostles or disciples of Jesus have always been and always will be. On this mountain of or this cave of Hira, you see here the Islamists doing their um, pilgrimage to uh, this cave where some Supposedly, this fictional uh, person, uh, Muhammad, who is nothing but Brahma, the Ram of God, in the cave of Hira, is um, 
writing, you see these literalists, of course, um, the world is full of uh, sheeple who believe that all of these uh, stories are literal. Of course, because the um, our pedophile uh, church masters, who are nothing but uh, abusers of um, the people who go to their churches, teach the literal filth of the scriptures. And of course, the Apostle Paul condemns them by saying, the letter of the word kills, but the spirit vivifies. Now, this cave is on the Jabal al-Nur, which means the mountain of light, near Mecca. The mountain of light is the light of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who says, I am the light of the world. The the Isra and the Miraj are the two parts of a night journey that according to Islamic tradition, the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, took during a single night around the year 621. It has been described as both a physical and spiritual journey. A brief sketch of the story is in the Surah, notice the Ra everywhere, you can't miss it. Surah 17 called al Isra of the Quran. Well, if Al Isra is not just Isra Al, which is nothing but Israel, the ancient syncretic religion slash science of antiquity. And of course, every philosopher um, of the ancient past, including Iamblichus, Proclus, Virgil, and Diodorus Siclus have ever reminded us that the Babylonians and the Egyptians have at least 500,000 years of astrological and syncretic records in their libraries. Of course, Rome uh, set about destroying these records and rewrote history and, of course, gave us a literal Ponzi, Jesus, Vicarious Redeemer, Redeemer, Saviour, who never came and never will return to save all the nappy-wearing churchgoers who think that some Jesus is coming in a white cloud in the heavens to save their sorry butts. It ain't going to happen. Hiram, Tyrian. Notice the word Tyrian. This is the Freemasonic um, expression which has been now reduced to basically just a um, sigil which neither they understand for their sheer stupidity, neither do the idiots that go to Freemasonic uh, temples understand any of it at all. But I shall explain this uh, quite clearly. Hiram is the Hiram, and it is the colour purple. Um, people who are synesthetic can see the colour of the crown chakra, and it is quite purple. Tyrion, uh, Hiram Tyrion, widow's son, sendeth to King Solomon. Tyrion is from Tyre, Ur, gold, the dyers of purple, porphyry, Hiram, the hero, the high ram, the pharaoh. You will see Hira, Hiram, everywhere if you pay attention. And of course, of course, Hiram sends to King Solomon, the widow's son. Why would he be a widow's son? Because the ram is born of a virgin. And of course, never is the immaculate children, uh, never are the immaculate children of God, which are we, contaminated because we were immaculately conceived because we all come from the Empyrean. Om. In Hindu, Om is the name of the sound of the sun. The true name of the Om is Omkara. Yes, or Aumkara. Aum is gold, and Kara is the Lamb of God, the Ram. And this also pertains to the Sanskrit word Prana which is qi in Chinese, or qi. And this pertains to qi ro, the Christ energy, Jesus being the king, because king means qi energy 
in motion. Of course, Jesus is the Omkara. And uh, without reading all the rest of these descriptions, we see that uh, the Om in all of these sacred scriptures have ever been the name of God. The Son, the original Om. And if you look to the right here, we see the seven colors of the seven chakras. And of course, you see the purple one, the thousand-leafed lotus to the left here. We have the two purple. Um, these two, the top one has a thousand leaves, leaves, and you will see in the middle the word for the top chakra, which is Omkara. Of course, we remember that Noah's Ark, of course, Noah had a rainbow, uh, <laughs> which is the Ark of the Covenant. And this purple chakra is pertaining to this beautiful crown chakra and the Om. And of course, Noah's Ark is, lands on Mount Ararat, Ararat, which is nothing but the Omkara. Here we have the three most recognized megalithic monuments on this planet, the three pyramids on the Giza Plateau. And in the foreground, we have the small pyramid, which the Greeks called Mycerinus, and the Egyptians, Menkara. Yes, this is nothing but the Hindu Omkara. And the middle pyramid, which is known to us by the Greek name Kephren, and the Egyptians called this one Kathra. Lots of Ra's turning up. And the Great Pyramid in the background, Knum Khufu. Uh, most people know this as the Cheops Pyramid, the Great Pyramid. And of course, they do not know it by its full name, the Knum Khufu, which conveniently um, has been left off because Knum means the ram. Hence, we have Menkara, the ram, Kath Ra, the ram, and Knum, the ram, Khufu Pyramid, all built on the Giza Plateau, which in Egyptian is known as the Giza Plateau. Yeah, Jesus, the lamb, the ram plateau, and of course, Pyramid. <coughs> Pyramid is hiding the word ram in the middle, <coughs> which means fire in the middle, uh, pertaining to the fire element of Aries the ram. Here we have a depiction of Knum in the Dendera temple complex in Egypt. Lots of Ra's turning up somehow. Here we have the great Ayers Rock in the centre of the island continent of Australia. And the local indigenous people, the Pichachanjara people, call this landmark in their original tongue, Uluru, which is nothing but El and Ra in the Aboriginal language. The correct term for black person in Pichachanjara is Anangu Maru. Maru is Mars, the ram. Literally, dark black person. Yes, because Ham, Kem, the founder of Egypt, is the black one, the black land. And Pichachanja, uh, a form of the verb go, combined with the suffix jara, means something like pichanj having, pichachanja having, which means the ram continuing or the ram having. Here we see many um, modern depictions of the lamb and the ram of God uh, because these artists realize that the lamb or the ram is actually the uh, chief most religious uh, animal and symbol of 
spirituality in the universe because everywhere in the universe where there is an ecliptic and where there is a vibration of energy all particles all atoms will commence at zero degrees right ascension of meridian ram and complete 360 degrees of energy here we have the ancient ram n the ram in in uh, England and this is the most haunted inn in on the planet according to some people and it pertains to Aries the Lamb of God and below we have Arnos Manor Hotel Arnos is the Greek word for lamb Jesus is a ransom a ram's son because as we shall see always the Lord the Savior as these beautiful uh, depictions and artwork show uh, that the ransom is the son of the ram the cerebrum and to the right at the bottom here we have uh, Pope Pius Pacelli the Nazi um, the friend of uh, Adolf Hitler <clears throat> who is depicted as the Good Shepherd. Elohim in the Bible. <clears throat> the word Elohim suggests ruler, judge, divine one, angel, God, goddess, God, godlike one, and it is the plural of Eloah from the root word Eloah which means God or false God and <clears throat> we have the first letters of this uh, word in an alternative expression Ul which means prominence and as we shall see uh, this also has to do with the verb of twisting because everything is spiritual spiral helical hence the DNA which has a twist in it and the horns of the ram uh, Ammon's horn we have uh, in the the hippocampus in the brain which is nothing but a whirly spiral depicting the ram's horn in Strong's concordance uh, the letters EL pertain to the ram and this is <clears throat> this occurs 183 times in the Old Testament and in Strong's Concordance the um, reference H352 for the for the word ran ail which is basically the EL in the word Elohim means all of these seven meanings ram ram as food ram as sacrifice ram skin dyed red for tabernacle uh, pillar doorpost Jams, Pilister, Strong Man, Leader, Chief, Mighty Tree, Terabinth. Here we have Phrixus and Heli in the uh, mythology where the ram the golden with the golden fleece comes to save them and Heli, the poor girl, falls into the water and hence we have in post for posterity the name of that crucial crossing point there called Heller's Point. Aries symbol represents the spiral horns of a ram. The Hebrew word for a ram's horn was shofar from Hebrew shofar ram's horn related to Arabic so a firu ram's horns. Akkadian shaparu wild goat the shofar was blown on two days of the year Rosh Hashanah corresponding to the Christian feast of trumpets Rosh meaning head or ram and Hashanah year and Yom Kippur corresponding to the Christian day of atonement the shofar blown at Mount Sinai then well, sorry when the Torah was given Torah of course containing the word ram came from the ram been sacrificed in place of Isaac. 
Here we see the um, ovaries. Of course, the sheep family is called ovis in, uh, in, uh, in the Latin language. And it is called uterus because it is twofold and divides on both sides into two parts that extend apart and bend back in the shape of a ram's horn. And this is from the etymologies of Isidore of Seville of the 7th century. And the two parts that extend apart and bend back in the shape of a ram's horn is what we call the fallopian tubes, salpinges. Tuba is a Latin word for trumpet related to English tube. In the textbooks, the fallopian tubes are called oviducts. The adjective applying to sheep is ovine. Greek sal pinks has three meanings, a trumpet, a fallopian tube, and also the eustachian <coughs> tube in the ear. The Greek sal pinks, trumpet, might be the same as shofar, trumpet, which has been translated as salpinx into Greek. The salpinges are two tubes leading from the ovaries of female mammals into the uterus. After the ovum or egg matures in the ovary, it falls into and down the fallopian tube. The trip to the uterus takes hours or days. Conception takes place in the fallopian tube. So here again we see the Lamb of God and he is um, in the uterus and the ovaries because the generative system belongs to the constellation of Scorpio which is ruled by the Lamb, Aries or Mars rather and Mars being the ruler of Aries and Scorpio pertains to fire and water for Aries is fire and Scorpio is water. They have named Aries on account of Ammon Jupiter because those who made the idols fashioned the horns of a ram on his head. Ammon, whose name for good reason is intended the son of my people, is also derived that partly its sense is of a proper name and partly it is an expression in itself for Ammi, after which the Ammonites are named, <clears throat> is the word for my people, again from the etymologies of Isidore of Seville. Several words derive from the ancient Egyptian name Amun via the Greek form Amon, Ammonite. Ammonia, an Egyptian god near whose temple Ammonia and Ammoniac were said to be obtained. Ammonium chloride, chemical used in batteries, amino, intermediates in metabolism, amine, ammonia derivatives, argali is a large wild sheep found in the dry mountain, mountainous areas of Central and North Asia. Latin name ovus amun, also related to the word amen, so be it, at the end of a prayer. Here we have Amun-Ra, the granite ram of Amun with King Ta-Arka. Ta the R in the middle of that name is in reference to the ram because it is mirror imaged as in Mars and Ram. Here we have Hermes, Mercury, Thoth, Moses, Her, Har, Ham, the burnt one the gracious, the merciful, Thoth and Ankh. Both of these words give us the words in English and French for thank you. Thoth gives you thank, which is the word Thoth and Ankh together. And of course in French, mercy is um, short for mercury. And of course, why would you thank someone? Because he is the kind shepherd as Jesus is the kind shepherd and as Apollo to the bottom right is carrying the shepherd, the, sh the lamb and Tamils to the left is carrying the lamb 
and Sargon is carrying the ram. Of course, Luke 15, 4-5 says, What man among you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after lost, the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. Here we have the most holy books in the universe. Islam, which is nothing but Isis, the Lamb, and her book, Al-Quran, which literally means recitation. Quran is short for Qutub, Ran. Qutub is book, and Ran is the Ran. The chief festival of the Islamists, Ramadan, which means the Ram Adam, or Maz Adam which means, in Hebrew, Adam, or rather, Mars, is pronounced Ma'adim. Judaism. The word for Torah, instruction, teaching, is derived from the root that was used in the realm of archery, Yare. Yes, and this pertains to the original Proto-Germanic word for year, which is Yaram. Yare means to shoot an arrow. Ro is from ram, to hit the mark. Chief festival of the Jews, the Passover of the Lamb, Pesach. Hindu, the Hindu holy book, the Ramayana. Well, if we haven't found another ram. Ramayana means the ram's journey. And the chief festival of the Hindus is the Ramanavami, held on the 15th of April for Aries. Christianity, the Old and New Testaments of the Christian Bible, called in Greek, Ta Biblia, Ta Ea, or the Holy Scriptures, E Ea Graphi. You will notice in English the word Graphi is graphics, writing, graffiti, and you will notice ra in the word graphy, because anything <coughs> with gra in it pertains to either gravity or writing. Anything with bra in it pertains to sound, as in abracadabra, as we shall see later on. Chief festival of the Christians, Easter, the resurrection of the Lamb, Jainism, and they have a book called the Kalpa Sutra, and uh, their holy festival is the festival of Par Yushan. Hiding in that word again is the ram. This tradition started in Gujarat after a son of the king of Vadananga, Vadanaga died at an early age. This book consists of a biography of Lord Mahavira in detail and the lives of the other prophets Tirthankara. I think we've seen Ankara before. Yeah, that would be the Menkara pyramid or the Ankara of the Hindus. And of course the original te text was written by Bad Rabahu, again, the ram turns up in that name. Chief festival, Lord Mahavira, again, the ram. The other Hindu epic, the Mahabharata, the title may be translated as the great tale of the Mahabharata, the great tale of the Bharata dynasty. According to the Mahabharata itself, the tale is extended from a shorter version of According to the Mahabharata itself, the tale is extended from a shorter version of twenty four thousand verses called simply Bharata. Bharata means the cherished. Other Rigvedic names, epithets or aspects of Agni include Matar Rishivan. Jateveda or Bharata. 
Barata is exactly the same name in the Jewish for the lamb. Chief festival, Ramanavani on the 15th of April in Aries. Zoroastrianism, they have a book called the Zendavesta and their hero is Ariman. Again, uh, harking back to the Muslim uh, Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim. Again, we find the ram. And as mentioned down below on this slide, we have the name Mithra, the ram. And in Persian, the name Mehran is derived from Mithra, which is nothing but the myth or the story of Ra, the ram. Here we have the three most important religious documents, the Bible, the Rig Veda and the Quran, catering to Islam, Hinduism, Judaism and Christianity, the big four. And these big four number in the billions. More than half of the world's population pertains or belong to these religions. And the Rig Veda begins with nine verses all celebrating and devoted to Agni, the Lamb of God. Islam, the Quran, the first verse of the Quran, as I mentioned before, is says Bismillah il Rahman il Rahim. In that verse you will find the lamb four times and the ram two times. Christianity, Judaism, the Torah, the Holy Bible, Genesis 1.1, the first three words, Bareshit bara Elohim. Bara is the lamb and El is the lamb. Again, three times the lamb is mentioned in the opening words of Genesis. Rama, Ramses, Ra. Here we have an old Irish expression, Imram, the plural which is Imrama. In early Irish literature, a story about an adventurous voyage. This type of story includes tales of Irish saints travelling to Iceland or Greenland, as well as fabulous tales of pagan heroes joining, journeying to the other world. An outstanding example of an Imram is Imram Brian. Interesting word, Brian. The voyage of Bran, <laughs> Brahma, which describes a trip to the enchanted land of women. After what seems to be a year, a Yaram, Bran and his colleagues return home to discover that their voyage had lasted longer than any memories and was recorded only in ancient sources. An Imram means a class of old Irish tale concerning a hero's sea journey to the other world. Yes, because when Ares descends over the uh, horizon, when it sets on the western horizon, it journeys to the other world. In Islam, an imam is a leadership position pertaining to the Lamb, once again. Hiram is a being as uh, Hiram is the builder of Solomon's temple. Priam was the king of Troy during the Trojan War. And what does Priam mean? Exceptionally courageous, as all rams are. Ra in Hebrew means shepherd, pastor, and uh, usually an ordained leader of a Christian congregation. Hence, Jesus in Matthew 26, 49 was called Rabbi by Judas. Greetings, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Mark 9, 5, Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Yes, Jesus was a Rabbi, meaning Rabbanim, sons of Ra, sons of the Ram. And of course, if you go to Egypt and 
you want to speak to the president of Egypt, you will address him as Ra'is, the Egyptian word for president, Ra'isis. To this very day, the president of Egypt is called Ra'is. Rama, or Rama, is a name found in the Bible, meaning lofty, exalted, also thunder. Judges 4, 5, and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Rama and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the children of Israel come up to her for judgment. Yes, because as we shall see later, Deborah means abracadabra, abracadabra. I create through speech. Hence, Deborah was a prophetess speaking. Exodus 12.37 And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth. Yes, because Ramesses is Ares and Succoth is Libra. And Libra, Tishri, is where the Jews celebrate Succoth down to this day. 1 Samuel 7.15-17 to 17, Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. He went on a circuit year by year to Bethel, Gilgal, Mizpah and he judged Israel in all these places. When he would come back to, then he would come back to Ramah for his home was there. He administered justice there to Israel and built there an altar to the Lord. Yes, because Rama is the ram and Samuel is a play on the word Samael, another name for Mars, which is backward for Rama. And of course, Bethel is the Tropic of Cancer, Gilgal is Capricorn and Mizpah is Libra, the four cardinal points the cardinal cross. So Mars, or Samael, Samuel judges Israel along the circuit, which is the circuit of the ecliptic. Jeremiah 13, Jeremiah 31, 15, Matthew 2, 18. This is what the Lord says. A voice is heard in Rama, mourning and great weeping. Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Yes, of course, Raquel is weeping in Rama because the children of Israel, you see, have gone astray and they do not return the cerebrospinal fluids to the optic thalamus. Hence, the cerebrum is weeping because there is no fluids for her to be bathed in and to rejoice. Here we have Ra, shepherds, in the Bible. We have in Genesis 4.2, Abel, a keeper of flocks, a shepherd. Genesis 21.28, Abram, set apart seven ewe lambs from the flock, a shepherd. Genesis 13.5, the nephew of Lot, a keeper of flocks, a shepherd. Genesis 26.12, Isaac planted crops in the land and also had flocks of sheep, a shepherd. <clears throat> Genesis thirty thirty two, 32. Jacob, Israel, tended the flocks of Laban, his father-in-law, the father of Rachel, the ram. And so Jacob, Israel, is a shepherd, the lamb of God. <clears throat> Genesis 29, 9. And Rachel came with the father's sheep, for she was a Shepherdess. Genesis 47.3 Pharaoh asked the brothers, What is your occupation? Your servants are shepherds. They replied to Pharaoh, Just as our fathers were. Exodus 2.17 Some shepherds came along and drove them away, but Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. Yes, because Moses, Mars, the one who was drawn from water, of course, Mars being maritime water, was a shepherd. First Samuel 21.7 Now one of Saul's servants was there that day, detained before the Lord. He was Doeg the Edomite, Saul's head shepherd. Second Kings 3.4 Now Mesha, king of Moab, raised sheep. 
And he had to supply the king of Israel with a hundred thousand lambs and with the wool of a hundred thousand rams, because he was a shepherd. Amos 1 1. The words of Amos, one of the shepherds of Tekoa. What he saw concerning Israel two years before the earthquake, when Uzziah was king of Judah and Jeroboam, son of Joash, Jehoash, was king of Israel. Luke 2.15 When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Luke 2.20 the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Here, shepherds is pertaining to uh, initiated ones. Carpenters is another name for Freemason or astrologer or shepherd because, you see, the flocks are the stars along the ecliptic, hence a shepherd is an astrologer. Ram Lam. These are some of the very, very few choice scriptures in the Bible which contain the Ram motif. Uh, in particular, um, are the ones in the Gospels of John. John one twenty nine. There, clearly, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The word used there is Amnos. Amnos is Ammon, Ammon-Ra. In the Gospel of John, and again in John 1.36, it uses the word Amnos. Behold, and John, looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. That word in Greek is amnos, amonra. Again, in Acts 8.32 and in 1 Peter 1.19. These are the four places in the Bible where amnos is used. The other expression is agni in the Bible. And here in Revelation are all the references to the Lamb of God. Revelation 5.6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, which God sent forth into all the earth. Revelation 5, 8, the, 20, the four and twenty elders. Well, if that isn't the 24 hours around the ecliptic daily that the Lamb of God Aries goes around. Revelation 5.12, worthy is the Lamb. Yes, it is, because when we return to the cerebran, we will be worthy. Revelation 5.13, and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. On and on, there are 27 references in the Bible to the Lamb in Revelation. And there's only 22 chapters in Revelation. 22 is a Kabbalistic number. The tarot cards, the Hebrew letters of the alphabet, etc., etc. Here we have modern names for Ram and the meaning thereof. Rambert, Rami, Ramhart, Ramirez, Ramiro, Ram, Ramon, Raymond, Ramon, Ramsey, Ramsden, Ramsay, Rami, Ramsey, Ramsey, Rand, Randall, Randale, Randall, Ranson, Randy, Rain, Ranel, Renen, Ransom, etc., etc. All names of various languages for the Lamb of God. Here we see in astrology, as it has always been, the Lamb, Aries, on top of the head. Here is the ram with four heads because he is the ruler of the tropics, the four cardinal signs, four wings. Here is the cerebram. And if you can't see the ram in the cerebram, you're looking the other way. Here is the ram, the eye of 
Horus. Horus is Horus. Rus is the Lamb of God. And there is the eye of Horus because a cross section of the cerebrum shows the eye of a lamb. There again, here is the Lamb of God. Of course, the high brain, the cerebrum, is reaching out to the man brain, the cerebellum, hence God is reaching out to Adam to say, please, you must ascend to the higher mind if you want to come to where I am. Here again, we see the cerebellum and the brain stem. Uh, here we can see the back part of the skull is called a lambdoid. And in the middle of the skull, where the spinal cord goes through the foramen magnum, we find that foramen means the whole of Ammon and the human body has many, many, many foramens in them. One only needs to consult uh, Sante's anatomy or Gray's anatomy. Here we see the picture above of the cerebellum and the brain stem and to the left we have Ganesh in the uh, Hindu tradition this is why the elephant god is so common and uh, a motif in the East because it is dealing with the high ram, the lamb of God, and the brain stem, the trunk of the elephant. Here is the pineal gland at the bottom. This is the tree of life that God planted in the Garden of Eden. And to the right we have the pituitary gland, the tree of good and evil, because the pituitary gland is a twofold gland, whereas the pineal gland is a phallic ram. And of course, we also have to the right here, we have a picture of Amun Ra and Amon's horn, which is in the brain stem. The, and we have here the brachium. Pontus Celebri to the right, Brachium again is the ram, and we have the two olives just below the ponds and the two pyramids. What are two olives and two pyramids doing in your head? Well, we need to consult Hiram, the architect of the soul of man's temple. Here we have the tree of knowledge. Um, of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. To the left we have the male tree and to the right we have the female tree and we have the polarization which we erroneously call duality because all electric light vibrates, is energy and hence it is two-sexed and therefore it is light which is polarized and unlike the causal light of magnetism which is white light and has no polarity. So what we have starting at the top is all the boy-girl words and this is only a very, very short list of an eternal list that can go ad nauseum, ad infinitum. So to the left we have the glyph of Mars and to the right we have the glyph of Venus. And below that we shall go down these two trees and see the similarities of all of these so-called dualities. Ram and you. You is another word for awe. When we have awe, we have awe for our mother Venus. Below this we have Adam and Eve, Mars and Venus. Venus is Devaki. You will see the word Eva inside of Devaki. You will see Eva inside of Deva, the mother of Krishna, Devaki. Below this we have dawn and evening. Dawn comes from Adonai. Adonai is the Lord, the sun of the dawn, rising in the dawn. And Eve is always in the scales of justice, Libra in the west where evening occurs. 
Below this we have morn and eve. Morn is another way of saying Mars in the morning rising. And the morning is opposite the evening or the eve, which in Italian is called Sera. Sera is the wife of the ram Abraham. So you can do this in any language. You don't have to stick to English. English is probably the best language for astrotheology because English is Anglish is angelish, the language of angels. Below this we have Maria and Ave, Ave Maria. Ave Maria is Eve Mary, her original name, Isis Mary. She is the avatar. She also gives us the wave. The secret of creation is in the wave. She is the sine wave, the sin wave. Hence, sin, the sine wave, came about because of Eve. Below this, we have odd and even. All odd numbers are masculine. All even numbers are feminine. Eve divides. Even numbers divide. Hence, we have the first account of division in the Garden of Eden. Below this, we have one and two. One comes from On, the original name of the sun, who is otherwise known as Sol, the solo one, Sol Invictus, the one. And two comes from Eve, to double, to divide. Below this we have good and evil, God and devil, atom and electron. Electron, L is another name for Eve because the electron is the rib that came from atom, the Adam, so that Eve could be created in the Garden of Eden. Element, which comes from elements, which come from electrons, mean the mind of Eve, matter. Our mother, made of elements, the mind of Eve. Yang, yin, yineka is the Greek word for woman. Abram, Sarah, Brahma, Saraswati, Brahma, Shiva, Brahma, Bhavatarini, Brum, Sere, which is the other backwards for Cerebrum, cerebrum, and hence the word for celebration comes from cerebrum because most of the holy celebrations ever are celebrated in Aries, Nisan. Below this we have Roma. Roma is built on the river Tevere. Here you will see Ram and Eve once again. Tiber means liber, means libra, means free, and of course Sarah, unlike Hagar, is the mother of the free. Mona Lisa, lamb dove, ram assez, ram assez, the pharaoh, lamb isis, backwards is Islam, Moses, ra el, Right, left, Aleph, Beth, red, blue, because red is the, the color of the masculine polarity of electric light and it denotes fire. Blue, on the other hand, the feminine denotes water. Yes, no, on, off, do, have. You'll notice in the verb have, which is the motto of Taurus, which has the ruler of Venus in astrology. The motto of Taurus being have contains the word Eve in it. So does grave, save, heaven and seven, because all of these pertain to Eve. She is grave because she is our mother, gravity. She saves us, the Holy Virgin. She is in heaven, Eve, because Venus rules Taurus. Taurus is the cerebellum. It's in the head. Heaven. Below this we have anger, love, hot, cold, fire, water. 
Raya, Diva, Agni, Shava. And all of these are exactly the same thing on the plane or the perspective which they come from. All of these are the same things in their field of science. Here now we have abracadabra. Abracadabra means I create through speech. Kadeva, meaning death, perish like the word, is the opposite of creating, which also comes from abracadabra. Abracadabra, the speech, has to do with the logos or the verb. Verb comes from abra. It is the word which creates worlds. Hence, Jesus, the word of God, the logos, the creator of the world, created the world with the word, abracadabra. And world comes from whirling spiral. Spiral is the root of spirit. All things in the universe spiral or are helical toroidal fields. Habla, the Spanish word to speak. Palabra, the Spanish word for word. Labra, lips to speak in Italian. Parlare, Italian to speak. Narrate, to speak. Notice the word audio. Audio is composed of two words, gold and God. Audio is abracadabra, the voice of God. Another expression, abracadabra, open sesame. Why do we say open sesame? Because abra also means to open. In Spanish, abra la puerta means open the door in the imperative. Abra in Italian is apra, from which we get aperio, aprile, aprile, April, the month of Aries, the Lamb of God, which opens to the springtime, the primavera, the first season. Apo, which means from, or father, paternal spirit, the Greek word for from. Apa, the Hindu word for star. Cerebrum, Sarah Abram. Algebra, from Arabic algeber, reunion of broken parts. Hebrew, which comes from the Iberian Peninsula, where the Ebro River is, the original speakers of the Ebru abracadabra language. Labyrinth, abracadabra. Pyramid, which is just another word for Abram, pyramid. Bravo, which is something that you do if you are good. Bra is the ram. Prima, the principle, meaning the first one, Aries, the ram. Brahma, the creator, through speech. As Brahma breathes, he creates. As he inspires, he withdraws his creation. Deborah, to speak, comes from Abra, Kadabra, the prophetess. Reverberate, vibrate, verb, branch, bracelet. Braccia in Italian means arms. Arms is an anagram for ram, Mars. And of course, what do your arms do? They branch out. Bra, abra. In Spanish, to hug someone is abrazo because you do that with your braccia, arms. Candelabra. Candelabra means the priest of Baal speaking because Baal is the sun and of course the sun is light. So when you light your candles on the candelabra, abracadabra, you are shedding light just as the sun does. Can means priest as in Vatican, the priest of the serpent. L is, well, Baal, the sun, candelabra. Labarum. Labarum is 
the cross of Constantine. There we have a picture of the cross, the cross of Constantine, the labarum, because this is how nature gets things done. The sun on the ecliptic expresses the labarum. The cross of Constantine is called the kiro, the two letters in Greek ki and ro, and hence as the sun goes from solstice to solstice, from Capricorn to Cancer, year in, year out, it produces, through photosynthesis, all of the visual illusions that we see. Devarim, words in, the, words in Hebrew, which means Deuteronomy, words. Devarim comes from abracadabra, create through speech. Mahabharata. Bara is Abbara, Kadabra. And as I mentioned before, Barata means the Lamb of God. Liberate, to free. Urban, Calabria, one of the provinces of Italy. Barbara, from Baalbek, meaning Barbara is Saint Barbara, who comes from Baalbek, the house of Baal. And here we have the two crosses, the two most famous crosses, the Labarum and the cross with the serpent on the tree. And both of these spell out the letters in the alphabet, Q-R-S-T. Q-R is the Kiro and S-T is the serpent on the tree, the two most famous crosses in the universe. And when we say our alphabet, L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S-T-U, we are saying Lumen of Christ in our alphabet. Here we have a Lalarium in Rome, a little altar in the backyard for your favourite god. If your patron saint was Jupiter, you would have an altar to Jove, Jehovah. If it was Venus, you would offer something to uh, Eve, the mother, um, Ave Maria. The Lalarium was a shrine to the guardian spirits of the Roman household. Family members performed daily rituals at this shrine to guarantee the protection of these domestic spirits, the most significant of which were the Lares. Ra and ram words. Here is another tree. Uh, ram is another root and key word, as is abracadabra, as is looks, and many of the words that I shall be discussing in this presentation. Here we have the Hebrew word for shepherd, Ra. In fact, uh, Psalm 20, I think it's Psalm 21, the, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, the true name for that psalm, which is the most um, popular psalm of all the psalms, is dealing with Ra, for it is called Jehovah Ra. That's the true name of Psalm 23, Jehovah is my shepherd, Jehovah Ra. So we see um, undeniably the ram uh, and the lamb, of course, Ra, uh, or rather the letter R and L being interchangeable. In Egyptian, today, if you go to Egypt, the word for president is Ra-is. Yes, that is Ra and Isis, because the president, the head of the country, must be the head, and Ra, Resh, is the head. Hence, you will find hiding in that word, Israel. Rabbi, uh, a teacher of the Torah. So a rabbi or rabbinim means the sons of Ra. Radius, you will find hiding in the word radius, two words, Ra and God for Latin. Because that's what a radius does. It extends from the center of a circle and touches the uh, circumference of the, cir the circle, hence it represents the soul of all living things, the Ra God, which is inside of us. 
radix, another word in Latin meaning source. Of course, Ra is the source. Radiate, you will find hiding in there Ra and God. Radiate, to emit energy. Of course, Ra is energy. Light. Ranuit is the Egyptian word for march. Ramify, again, energy, traveling in uh, branches, electrical energy, electrical currents, as in Birkeland currents. Pyramid, pharaoh, Ra is hiding in all of these words, usually in the middle of the word. Brahma. Another, another way of saying Abraham, just put the A on the end of the word and you will find that it spells Brahma. Abraxas, again, all of these words have numerical values which will astound you if you do your homework. You will find that Abraxas um, will correspond to a processional number or 365, uh, the um, number of days the sun is on the ecliptic or 360. These are all key words. Scarab, the animal that the Egyptians adored because it represented the sun, Ra. Sakra, which is sacred, Ra. Chakra, we have seven chakras, seven being the uh, God number, the favorite number of God, and they are energy centers, wheels, yeah, wheels of abracadabra. The Quran, the Qutub, the book of the Ran, or the Ram, take your pick. Israel, Isis, Ra, and El. Uranus, Uranus, Ra, of course, everything comes from Ra. And, of course, um, Abraham comes from the land of Ur, does he not? Oh, yes, he does. That would be Uranus. Paradise. Yes, a garden, of course, because Ra, radiating energy, produces gardens. Prayer. Hiding in the word prayer is ray, ray of sunshine. Ra, the giver of rays of light. Hence, we pray to Ra. Kerub, another way of saying the energy of Ra, the Christ of Ra. Seraphim. Christ. As we look at the word, as we look at the alphabet, uh, we see that the alphabet begins with A, B, C, D. This is no mistake, for they are the consonants of abracadabra. And then every other letter is perfectly in place to describe what abracadabra does. And then as you go along, you will find that the letters L, M, N, which is the Latin word for light, Lumen, luminate, illuminated, illuminati, l illumination, uh, lament, and of course, then proceeding onward in the alphabet, as I said before, Q R S T U, Christo. So if we get these three groups of letters, abracadabra, A, B, C, D, lumen, L, M, N, and Christo, we see what's really going on with the alphabet because the alphabet is the holy alphabet and the 26 letters of the English alphabet are all perfectly in place along the ecliptic and correspond with the zodiacal signs. Reverberate, which is what produces energy, which is what produces physical matter. The logos, sound. It's a sound light show. Hurrah is what we say when we are happy that something has succeeded and has been successful and has conquered. Ra is what children exclamate when they want to scare you because Ra is the universal energy source. Hence, they project forth their scary energy. Uram is the Hungarian word for my lord. Basically, that is just the word ram. And aram is the Hungarian word for electricity.
because the Lord, Ra, is electrical. Red and blue, divided, electrical energy, positive and negative, male and feminine. L, the bull. L is one half of the force, the Taurus force, called electricity. The other half being Ra, sound, the word, vibration. Right and left, red and blue, fire and water is what electricity is all about. Inside the force of electricity, you will find red and blue light, you will find fire and water, negative and positive, male and feminine, etc., etc. Here are words which contain Ra and El from Israel. The word Rael, this is a name. Ramble, the ram and the bull. Aries and Taurus, both in the cranium. So when you ramble on, you are doing what the ram and the bull do. Right and left, red and blue. Blue is an anagram for L. You'll find L hiding there, and you'll find Ra hiding in the word red. Rebel, one who is a rebel is one who will not submit to any superior, supposed, presumed authority. Hence, we are following the true path by being rebels. Then we will revel in our power and beauty. As ravel would would do when we ravel a complex puzzle, when we unravel something. You see, this is what the universe is doing. It is unraveling electric force. Ramble, as in ram and bull. Reveal. Well, you look at the word reveal and you see, of course, Ra and Bell hiding in there, but veil, veal is also veil, the veil of Isis. Of course, if you want to pull back the veil of Isis, you will reveal many secrets. What does it mean to be real? Real. Ra and Al. Allah. The popular Spanish name Raul. The royal. The royal elite. El being the, the key word. Rule. Why do the royals rule over us? Because they have the secret, Ra and El. Roller. A wheel that rolls, Ra El. When you travel, you Ra and El. Everything is traveling, unraveling, rebelling, rambling, being real. Revealing, being royal, being real, etc., etc. Here we have the secret to the word L. It is found in Apel of Apollo or Apis, the bull god. L, apple. For an apple is the true fruit which describes the toroidal field. For inside the apple is is an apple core. Core is cur or heart. And as you see in the diagram here, we have the heart at the center of the toroidal apple. And you that is your cur or core, your apple's core. So the apple of Eve or the sin of Eve is the sine wave that is produced by the Taurus Field, fiel de Torras, field. In all the important words, we'll be hiding Ra and El. And as you see the tree, the uh, roots are where the core is, and the earth also has a core. Every galaxy has a core, as represented in these graphics. L is also oxygen. Ox is the bull. 
ox is the air that we breathe. So oxygen is nothing but oxygenerator. All elements that have gen, as in nitrogen, are dealing with generation. So the bull who is generating or oxygenerator, it is the element that turns up in fire, air, water and earth. 30% of fire is oxygen. 21% of air is oxygen. Water is, well, a third. H2O, O being a third of the compound, which is water. And earth is 30% oxygen. Hence, the torus field, the oxygenerator, is everywhere in the universe. And we see here <coughs> that um, carbon-12 is the, um, the isotope of carbon which makes up 99% of all the carbon in the universe and the universe is structured upon carbon-12. Six protons, so-called protons, six so-called electrons and six so-called neutrons. <coughs> Ank, here is another key word which will um, which will give many, many other words in many other languages. In this case, we only have English, and which will unlock uh, the meaning of many words. Angle, angel, English, think, thing, king, anchor, anger, anxiety, anguish, gnash the teeth, link. Knit, not, nor, gnarled, ankle, ankylosis, uncle, lung, neck, knuckle, anoki. For lack of time, I can't go into the uh, etymology of these words, but they all go back to the ank. And the fact that the ank is an angle, it's a measuring tool to measure the angle of the angels along the ecliptic. And all of these other words have to do with the, uh, the ank in that it has connecting angles, you see. An ankle is a connecting part of the body, an angle, etc. Ur, which is the Chaldean word or Chaldean word for or, which is the uh, Egyptian equivalent or backwards, Ra, the same word in Egyptian in, in Babylon is Ur, hence Abram of the land of Ur, which is referring to gold, light, or time. And as we saw earlier, sound, Abra. But Oro in Latin is gold, Ora is time and of course if you put an h in front of the word order you will have the word horus and of course horus is the timekeeper the sun so time tempo chronos all of these time words they go back to saturn whereas order goes back to the sun and so the sun is one timekeeper whereas saturn is another timekeeper Hence, temple comes from tempo, time, chronos, the ruler of all temples, the ruler of time and space. And so all of the orbs of the solar system do this. But um, the er words are very interesting, and you will notice in all of these words that gold or time or light is hiding in them, or even the word fire. Fire is light. Hence, fire is also hiding in these words. Ouroboros, Empyrean, our true home in the causal planes. Pure, which is what we are. Purge, to purify with fire. Urge, pyre, pyrate, Uraeus, the serpent. Uranus, uranium, the element which was named after Uranus. Taurus. Saturn, Horus, Orion, 
Orb, Ornan, which is um, a, a biblical word. Word, Lord, Orpheus, Jordan, Aurelius, Orgasm, Origin, Organic, Urine. All of these words, all of them have to do with gold. Time, light, fire, sound, which are really all different vibrations, different emanations of the same thing. Here we come to another very, very key word, looks. And this will also um, produce many other words connected to it, which will reveal a treasure trove of knowledge. Looks is divine light. <clears throat> and below that is the word lumen. Lumen is mundane light. Looks produces lumen. Lumen comes from looks. Looks is the Einsoff, magnetism, the original white, pure, undivided light, which is God. Lumen is the creator, the electrical creator, the creator of the physical effect. Hence, we see how these words have penetrated our English language by the words that we are going to explain in this uh, in this graphic. But uh, L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S-T-U virtually means the lumen of Christ. And those words are all in sequence in our English alphabet, and you'll find them in sequence in most alphabets on the planet. L and N are always clumped together. Q, R, S, T are always clumped together. Lumen, mundane light. And this is where the word man comes from. It comes from the hand, which is in Latin is la mano, uh, because we do all our manifesting with our hands. And so manus is the Latin word for hand. So we are human, woman. We are manifestors, manipulators, maneuverers, um, managers. All these come from the word hand because we articulate and express with our hands. From lumen comes the word numen, which is divinity. Numen which is relating to our mind, our divine minds. And it, it also gives us the word name, nomen, numen, nomen in Latin. Mary was called Maria Illuminatrix. You will find L-M-N-O-P, or rather L-M-N, in sequence in that word, Luminatrix. She is the Maya the Maya Luna or the moon. And you'll see how uh, Luna or moon still contain and always contain this La, uh, La Mano, uh, the same consonants. Om, Omen, Amen, Elohim, Immanence. You will see how M and N play a very important part in these words. Please meditate on these words and their meaning and understand that they have to do with light. The Elohim, there is no mistake that L and M are hiding in the word Elohim because the seven Elohim are the abracadabra that produce the physical effect that we are living in. Illumin, meaning bitter salt. Again, LMN, hiding in that word. Subliminal, liminal meaning a threshold. Limitation is also um, uh, host to the letters LMN. Element, LMN, hiding in element. And what do elements do? They create matter. Elements come from lumen, from light because matter is made from light. Element means 
the mind of Eve. El is Eve and ment means mental. And of course, Eve is the mother of material, for she is matter. Bodies are mantles. A lemon is produced by light, L-M-N, and hence a lemon is gold in colour because light is gold. Lament, the word lament is the effect of matter made from lumen originating in looks. When we lament something, we lament the fact that it was produced in the material world because matter is polarised and matter cannot be a place where pure love and pure bliss exist for it has two polarities, positive and negative, good and evil. Column, what is a column of light? Uh, a column, well, it is a pillar of light. Aluminium comes from alumen, meaning bitter salt. Analema in astronomy, an analema comes from Greek, analima, which is a pedestal of a sundial. And there is a picture there of an analema, the figure eight in the sky, which is produced by the sun annually as it goes through the ecliptic. Laminin, laminin, again, another word which contains the LMN sequence. Laminin are major proteins in the basal lamina, influencing cell differentiation, migration and adhesion, as well as phenotype and survival. So we see in the picture here of laminin that it is in the shape of a cross. Yes, the cross of matter. And again, these are pure phenomena of light. So as for the church goes, that praise the Lord because the cross of Christ is to be found in the proteins of the body, the laminin, uh, they have to rethink that. What they would need to understand is that light produces all these effects and God is light. Lemniscate. There is the lemniscate there, the figure eight that is found in the DNA. Lemniscate means... Uh, it's a, um, a figure eight, and the word comes from the Latin lemniscatus, which means decorated with ribbons. And if you don't hi find the word ribbons hiding in DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, ribbon being the key word, and the ribbon is the ribbon strands of DNA and of course DNA begins with Deo which is God and of course DNA backwards gives you the word and 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 is short for Andros which is the Greek word for man and man is made from DNA Andros backwards Laminins are major proteins in the basal lamina, one of the layers of the basement membrane, a protein network, network foundation for most cells and organs. The laminins are an important and biologically active part of the basal lamina, influencing cell differentiation, migration and adhesion, as well as phonetic and survival. Here we have laminins, and uh, we have uh, various examples of laminin, and we see them there in the mitochondria. And we see how uh, <laughs> the, the Jesus um, uh, story fits in well with laminin, of course, because lumen is what Jesus is, because lumen is mundane light. And Jesus is the word of God, the creator of worlds, world word. And hence, we find that laminin, is nothing but another way of saying Jesus or light or lumen. Again, here we have the root words er and or or the au um, expression of the same word. 
Uh, and again, we see all of these words are connected to the gold. So when you go to the Giza Plateau or the Giza Plateau, call it Jesus Plateau, you will find that there are three rams on that plateau, Piram ids, and they are from the Abraham or Abrahamic tradition because it's a religio science based on fire worship, light worship, sound worship, and of course that's what the pyramids are for. They are transformers of primary energy into secondary force, whether it be electricity, light, or other forms of generating energy. Here we have the uh, DNA, and we see that um, the DNA is formed with uh, hexa hexagon shapes and pentagon shapes, and these, um, these two shapes are what have produced the word serpent. Sir is short for Sarah, which is a hexagon, and pent is short for pentagram, which is <clears throat> the, uh, the shape we see here in the pyramidines. And we see much information here which comes from light. This is the serpent, the serpent of the DNA strands, the helix, which comes from helios comes from the great tome called The Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, um, released in 1916, one of the greatest works explaining the uh, roots of ancient words. And <clears throat> it is um, marvellous to see how the word Brahm is so significant in all of the theologies on this planet. Here are words which come from the seven planets, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon. Saturn gives us the word element. L is Saturn, the mind of Saturn, or the mind of Eve, take your pick. Electron, set, Satan, temple, time, chronology, synchronous, templar. Jupiter gives us jovial, gene, Genius, genes, genie, generous, gorgeous. Mars, ram, Mary, maritime, marine. Marito, which is the Italian word for husband. Marshal, morning, dawn, martyr, market. In fact, there are many other words too, which I have not included in this list, um, which come from Mars. For instance, Mars is in astrology, Mars is the ruler of what is bitter. So in Italian, uh, bitter is called amaro, A-M-A-R-O. Hence, Mars is the bitter planet. And you see that Mars will be hiding in names like Martin, uh, Master. Mars is the master, the, the star of Mars, Mars star. So we can find it also in the stone called marble. Marble is the, the, uh, the stone of choice for Rome. Rome is an anagram for Mars. Um, and also the word for hammer in Latin is martello, begins with Mars, because you pound things martially with a hammer. The sun. The sun gives us the word solo, sol, solace, solitude, solitaire, soldier, soldi, which is the Italian word for money, solea, which is a flamenco uh, form of music which has to do with playing solo on the guitar. Venus gives us the words wave, save, have, grave, heaven, element, electron, venerate, venereal, evening, eve, even evil, devil, mercury, thought, thin, thank, mercy, French word for thank you, mercury, you can see it hiding in there, merchandise, commerce, mercenary, market also comes from mercury because of merchandise in the market, harm, 
him, her, herald. Notice that her, which is short for Hermes, relates to the feminine gender. Yes, because Mercury is both male and feminine. And Mercury is the, uh, the courier, you see, the fast feet of Mercury. Hence, many newspapers are called courier or herald. Herald is short for Hermes, the herald. And also in the word herald, you'll find the word al hiding in there also. Moon gives us the word mono, mind, mental, money, moneta, monarch, minister, monster, demon or demon, monotheism, monkey, magenta, magdalene, monopoly. Here are some uh, interesting Ra words from a... Um, an individual in the country of Israel who is called Avner Avdam and his official, official Facebook page is there and um, contact details. Avner Avdam, basically this also goes back to the root Abra. These are words dealing with light, the sun and blood, etc. Uh, I will leave this information for... Um, for the readers, I will not uh, elaborate on this because it is self-explanatory. Here are some more Ra words and Hebrew words showing how important the Ram is in theology. Here again, more Ra words. More Ra words, self-explanatory. The Quran in the Surah 25, in one of the most popular and celebrated concordances of the uh, Quran on the internet, you will find this information. You will find the constellations of the zodiac plainly and clearly explained and described in the Quran, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, in these uh, surahs, the 15th and the 25th surah. You'll also find in the surah 41, the seven heavens. Of course, they are the seven Elohim, the seven planets of the solar system. Here are also the zodiac on the hand, and this uh, is self-explanatory. This book uh, explains how the Gospel of Mark, which is short for Mars or March, um, is a gospel dealing with the ecliptic beginning in the constellation of Aries. Also, the Gospel of John begins in Aries, whereas Luke and Matthew begin in Capricorn, the goat, with a uh, newly born Jesus in a crib, in a manger, whereas uh, both Mark and John begin with uh, a fully grown Jesus beginning on the ecliptic in the sign of Ram, Aries. And here we have the self-explanatory notes that come from this book, which explain, uh, as you read the Gospel of Mark, you will find all of these correspondences with the sign of the zodiac, and they are all perfectly in order as Mark writes his gospel starting in Aries and ending in Pisces. These are all the teaching points that you will find in the gospel of Mars. And here we have the Egyptian um, pilgrimage system starting in Heliopolis, which is the city of the sun, the city of Ra, and which corresponds with Leo and the heart chakra. And then as you go up the Nile, you uh, eventually get to the head Ra, the Ram in Thebes, and the temple of Karnak, which is the greatest temple on the planet in terms of size and magnificence, and it is dedicated to the Ram Ares. And as you go along the Nile up to um, Upper Egypt, you uh, eventually come to Thebes and pay tribute to Ra, Amun-Ra, the god of Karnak, uh, the ram god, 
and as you get off the uh, the boat on the Nile River, you uh, traverse the avenue of sphinxes, which are rams, which take you to the temple of Karnak. But before you get to Thebes, you must go to Memphis, where um, Jupiter, the ruler of Cancer, is, and that was that is the god Ptah, Jupiter, the patron god of uh, Memphis. Then you come to Hermopolis, um, and that corresponds with Gemini and the lungs, and that's where Hermes um, or Mercury, the ruler of Gemini, is. Then you go to Dendra, which is devoted to Hathor, the bull, Taurus, and then, of course, you go in sequence to Thebes and to the ram in Aries. And so you start from the heart and in Heliopolis, and you go to the head, or to heaven, heaven head, same word, in Karnak, and there you give your devotion to the god Ra, Jehovah Ra, as expressed in the 23rd Psalm in the Bible. And here we have the avenue of rams, which take you to the greatest temple ever built on this planet in terms of size, 60 acres of temple grounds, um, some of the greatest uh, pillars and columns ever erected by mankind on this planet. And here you see the avenue of the rams and, of course, none other than Ramesses, the uh, Egyptian pharaoh, standing under the ram's head because the ram is the symbol of someone who is in the higher mind because the cerebran is the higher mind. Hence, Ramesses is in the higher mind. And the finest way to get into the higher mind is to visit one of these temples where your consciousness is altered. Here we have uh, <clears throat> the crown of Arsinoe, who was one of the Egyptian pharaohs. And clearly you can see she has the ram's horns on her crown and um, on her um, ears. See that um, the ram's horn is there depicted. Clearly this is dealing with the chief god of the Egyptians, Ra the ram. And here we have the horoscope of Sri Rama. Sri Rama is the Hindu god uh, which corresponds to Jesus, the Lamb of God, whereas Sri Rama is the Ram of God. And, of course, his birthday occurs on uh, April 15th in the sign of Aries, the Ram. Sri Rama is basically just the perfect archetype for there never was a real historical literal Sri Rama. This is the archetype of the highest hero, which is what we um, are and who we are. Hence, we are heroes as Sri Rama is, as we ascend to the higher mind. And we have completed the presentation. <laughs>